Welcome to Mermaid's Cave. As you might expect, there's quite a bit of water here, and we're actually going to get an update to our swimming in this dungeon. It's one of a couple gimmicks here. Pretty rad. Also, yet again, we've got a dungeon with some good music. Yeah. I think. It's not the best, but it's a lot better than what we've had the last couple dungeons. I like the music for most of the dungeons. It's just the tracks are so short and they loop so quickly that they get really old. Oh, it's a Game Boy Color cartridge. It's only so much you could fit. Oh, it only had as, as, what, the same amount of memory as a Nintendo, right? Uh, I don't know. Probably. Alright, so we're introduced to the bubbles. That's what that was down there. Yep, you touch those, you won't be able to use your sword. Right, so that ring you just got would be a nice thing to throw in your box for dungeons, just in case, but, you know. The thing about the curse, though, is it doesn't last very long, so it's not that bad. Those candle enemies that we just saw, by the way, can get really hectic. Especially if they're in a small room. Come on. Oh, my preferred method for killing these guys is throwing a scent seed on the ground and they all just kill themselves. It's kind of silly. Though it is worth keeping that in mind. Like Stolfos lemmings. Nope, nope, nope. No, oh, you got cursed. You can't actually kill those right now. Oh, finally, the blue whiz robe. The whiz robes suck. Yeah, they suck a lot. The blue one especially takes a lot of damage and travels around. But if you remember what I said earlier, the gale seeds are a one-hit kill on them. And this is another room where we need to push a jar. Do you remember you have the cane of Samaria? Yeah, if you forgot you had that and you try to push a... You can't get another jar all the way to the other side. There's only one jar you can actually push. Oh, this room sucks a lot. Not with the Gale Seeds. <laughs> yes, but the Gale Seeds own everything. Perfect. They just don't kill the bubbles, but, you know... Now those guys, I think those are specifically floor masters, but they function the same as the wall masters. Right. Now there's an entrance there. I need to drop a bomb to access it, but I don't need to come here yet. This is actually for the end of the dungeon. Yeah, remember there's a time gimmick here, so that's an arbitrary turnstile at the moment. Doesn't really do anything to you. Oh, no. I ain't putting up with you. So the green whiz robes always appear in the same place, the red whiz robes teleport all around the room, and the blue ones actually move around and phase in and out. That's the difference. All of them hate the gale seeds, though. Hmm, thinking about it, do the gale seeds also work on these candles? No. The only thing that works on them is fire. You gotta light them up. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, you can see how they get really hectic if you can get trapped by them. Especially if there's more than one on fire at the same time and spit in a small space. Those two anti-fairies are best friends. <laughs> These torches, you actually need to light in this specific order. Yeah, I think there's an owl statue somewhere that gives you that clue. Something tells you. Ooh, the dark water, it's scary. And he agrees. See, I've come up with a solution, with an idea as to why you sink in it immediately. It's because it's an oil spill. Mm. You can't swim in it. Mm. 
You need to be a beautiful mermaid first. Oh man, that was a gang. <laughs> You're in the wrong neighborhood. So the dungeon looks like a mermaid. Just a little bit. It looks like bits of her fell off. You have to do a lot of back and forth. An easy way to take care of that is actually to save warp. Just save and quit, and then you start back at the entrance. Oh. Never delete that file. <laughs> Oops. That happened on the way back. Uh, oh, never mind. I really forgot what he said. No, oh, he's basically telling you you have to go into the dungeon in the past and the present. You want to start in the past because everything that you've done will carry over to the present. Right, so walls that you've bombed stay bombed, which is something to consider. You definitely want to go into this dungeon in the past first, so you're going to get dead-ended pretty quickly. Those torches will throw fireballs at you until you kill all the enemies. Oh, piss. Oh, wow, you have almost two full rows. What's going on? Have we forgotten what kills the whiz robes? No, I'm just too lazy to bring it out. If anything, I want to show how long it takes to kill them. Yeah, they... they well, you remember, you still have a level one sword. We're pretty far into the game. Getting plenty of hearts, though. Yeah, that's okay. The sword thing's gonna be remedied pretty soon. Oh, look, the map is a full mermaid now. Yep. Which means, I guess, it collapsed? In the past? Well, hmm. I guess, like, the top might have collapsed onto the bottom, and now she actually is a mermaid. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, there are actually two separate dungeons and compasses for the past and the present. Yeah, because the map is slightly different. Now, this is kind of cool. You need to go all the way into one of these corners before you activate that switch. Yeah, you don't remember where the floor was before you hit it. And there's two entrances you need to go in that room. Now, carrying on what you said, this is like the one place you actually need to drop a scent seed. I love it. They immediately just beeline for it. It's great. They give you plenty of seeds. Oh, yeah. If you don't normally try to get upgrades and extra additions, getting the seed bag upgrade is almost necessary for this game to keep yourself sane. <laughs> because you use a lot of seeds. It's almost a primary weapon in this game. They were actually kind of nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Seamless. Now this is an interesting puzzle room. We need to push this block onto those color blocks, and obviously have them line up. But if you push it onto the blue one first, you're not able to move it anymore. So you need to get the yellow and the red first. No, be careful. Don't move diagonally too much. <laughs> you gotta think about it a little bit. Each cycle only works for once for each color, so you have to keep rotating around in the middle. It's not too hard, though. The only thing this tells me is that if they did release the third game with the color gimmick, it might have been a pretty tedious game. Maybe. Kind of good that they just meshed it into these games. 
I got two turnstiles and a seed shooter. <laughs> two turnstiles and a seed shooter? I waited the entire game to make that joke. <laughs> Well, you do also have a microphone. That's true. Uh, maybe, yeah, okay. Yeah, you need to do it all the way around, do a lap. Yeah, welcome to turnstile puzzles. This isn't gonna get old anytime soon. I actually spent like two minutes trying to get this Gibdo to walk up so that I could just switch hook over there. Right. But he wouldn't come over there. Yeah, occasionally you can get them to cooperate, but it's not very common. Oh. oh no. Oh god, they do so much damage. Yeah. You do not want to get cornered by that thing. Excuse me. That was an accident, but I actually need to come down here and move on to the next turnstile. That is the door to the mini boss. How am I going to do this? Badly. Right. So, if I remember correctly, I may be wrong, but you fight the mini boss in one time and then the real boss in a different time. That's correct. Kind of odd, but kind of cool. You need to start out in the past, get a couple of keys and whatnot there. Move to the present, do the whole dungeon there with the mini boss, and then go back to the past to fight the boss. And the keys transfer between time, by the way. Actually, no, they don't. Okay, just delete that part of the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> it's this guy! He was in A Link to the Past, wasn't he? Yes, he was, and he's doing pretty much the same thing he did there. Just be an annoying little bastard. He likes to fly around and dodge my attacks. Yeah, and I don't think the scent seeds are doing anything to him. Nah, unfortunately. I kind of need to bait him to come towards me. Yeah, your spin attack is really your friend in this fight, because he likes to sneak up behind you. He attacks me, and he calls me a bully. You're such a bully! Here, take this fireball. He says he's Varen's loyal servant, as if, like, he's supposed to be her number two or something, but here he is in not even close- what, we're in, like, the fifth dungeon? Sixth. Yeah, sixth dungeon, so we're not even done. You're not important. God damn it! get over here. He's just more time-consuming to fight than anything. He's not hard. Fire. The red ones do seek you out, so you kind of have to slash those. Th fine, goodbye. So you can wait for them to dive to you, or you can rock's feather jump at them. Either way works. I'm gonna tell on you! It costs 200 rupees! Got a bit of a bomb timing puzzle here. Ah, you don't need to. Just get out your bomb arrows. Oh, wait. Could you imagine if you could shove a bomb into the seed shooter? <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to get anything in or out after that. Oh, yes. All right. Finally time. Now we are the mermaid. The McMaid. Marty McMermaid. Here we go. Finally, we can become Marty McSwim. <laughs> what a loser. God damn it. The good thing about the mermaid suit is, like the flippers, you don't have to select it. It's just part of you now. Another save warp. 
Even though I realized there was a teleporter in the room immediately left of me to take me back to the entrance. <laughs> nah, who needs that? You saved a couple seconds. Alright, so swimming's a little different with the mermaid tail. You press the directional buttons instead of A and B. I really don't like it. Yeah, it's kind of a pain at first. If you get good at it, though, you can swim really fast. I'm kind of getting the hang of it. I will say that when I first played this on my Game Boy Color, it's really obnoxious with the D-pad that's on the Game Boy Color to just mash your thumb a bunch. Later on, when I actually recorded it for the Let's Play and emulated it, it was so much easier. It probably would be, except I'm playing this on a controller and basically doing the same thing. Oh, right. Please tell me you're not using, like, a D-stick, though. No, it's directional buttons. I imagine with a stick it'd be even worse. The other side effect of the mermaid tail is it lets you swim in the deep, dark water. Ha! Ah, you went all the way for ten rupees. This room is sort of a callback to a room at the beginning of A Link to the Past. I like it. I dig it. Test your luck! And it basically is luck. I think it's randomized what you get here. Nah, the first one's always snakes. I don't know. It always seems that way, at least. Seems like it. But in my test run, the second button actually worked. This time, the second button was snakes again. It's truly random. And there have been times where I have pulled it and gotten snake after snake after snake, and it's really annoying. That's it. That's all you can do. Time to head back. But first... In the deep water. So the deep water is kind of cool. It puts you in this little, like, underwater world. And you get to see uh, McFly's sweet mermaid tail. And it's got that old-school screen-tearing effect. Yeah, I hope you like that, because there's a dungeon later! Basically a water dungeon. This one's only the hint of a water dungeon. It does it just enough to not be annoying. Yeah. The actual water dungeon's not too bad. Although some people hate it. So you're probably gonna hate it. <laughs> now the description of the mermaid's tail says you press A to use your items. Which means you press A to use the seed shooter or the switch hook because you can't use anything else. Mm-hmm. Not even your sword, which would probably be more effective in most situations. The only exception is if you're in the side-scrolling areas. You can use both buttons in that case. Yeah, it's like in Ocarina of Time where you could pretty much only use the hook shot underwater. At least they let you use the seed shooter here too, which doesn't make any sense, but yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? And we have some enemies that come back from Ocarina of Time, also those, whatever they call them in Zelda speak, but they're electric jellyfish. Baris? I think so. I remember the boss of Jabu Jabu was called the Baronade or something like that. Sounds right. Hey look, there's pits underwater, that makes sense. Yeah. I guess there's supposed to be whirlpools or something. They'll suck you in. They are making a downward motion. Right, because there's other pits in later water sections that you don't fall in. You can swim right over them. Hmm. This room's kind of funny. They have arrow traps at the top, but you don't need to go near there at all. Nope, no big deal. Not sure who designed that. It's just so you can look cool swimming through them. It's like that one dungeon room in Link's Awakening where you can just walk straight through like a hundred arrow traps and it looks really cool. Is that a room where you use the Pegasus boots? Nope, you just walk right through them like you don't give a fuck. Well. 
I don't remember what dungeon that is, though. Better play that game again. My mind's a little warped from playing it last time. <laughs> I don't know what order anything's supposed to be. Oh, this room, okay. Gotta use the switch hook to get all of these onto the tiles. Yeah, speed up's a good choice for this. With these, I like to get them all in a line closer to the tiles. Do do do, do do do. The sped up version of that music's great. <laughs> I kind of like how he swims when he's in the mermaid suit. It's all frantic. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. When you get good at it, you're just mashing buttons all over the place to swim fast. He just looks like a spaz. It's great. Now, it takes me a second to remember. Oh, yeah, Cane of Samaria. Right. The easy-to-forget item. That was weird. No. I've never seen that. <laughs> you can't aim directly at the paddles. That's funny. You gotta try to angle it between them. There we go. Nice. Going into the boss with Max. Now the boss, I think that's basically an Octorok. Yeah, it's supposed to be a big Octorok. Takes me a second. I do not need to attack into its upper blowhole. No. Or throw a bomb into it. You want to attack his soft, squishy underbelly. There's a couple ways to do that. Oh, now he's underwater. The game's even telling me what to do. Use the seed shooter. Well, right now you should be going underwater to hack at him. I thought maybe there's a way to drop a bomb in there, but nope. I mean, it would seem like that. There's a big hole on his head, and it doesn't do anything. Oh, God. Yep, just shoot him in the face. And that's how you get him up above, too. You want to bank your shots off the wall so that he gets hurt. That's it. Oh, yeah, I could have done that. I mostly just waited until he was facing me. Right. As far as underwater dungeon bosses go, I don't think this one's too bad. He has a lot of health, though. This fight takes a long time. It does. And it doesn't really change up. Yeah, I guess that's the one downside, is that he doesn't have a lot of variety. But I like the above water and below water mechanic. So if you stand in the right spot, you can actually hit him with the sword real quick before he spits at you, too. Hmm. It does a little bit more damage, but not much. You're, you're really not saving any time. You were taking a lot of hits, though. Good thing you got that red potion. Yep. I don't like using it, but there's a reason I have it. It's like RPGs where you hoard potions that you think you're going to use later. You got to use it. I'm thinking about it. I'm going to see Maple, like, immediately anyway. Right. Should probably have another one. Why not? Uh, I think I just pressed the wrong button. I'm not used to the new controls. Right. The bereft peak. It's so sad. That's less of a peak and more like the green from Black Adder 2. Excuse me, I'm allergic to that. Oh boy, time for a segue. Well, first off, surprisingly, Mabel didn't show up. Yeah, right. But I'm teleporting back to the present version, because you might have briefly seen there was actually a chest I hadn't activated. This is a side path, which I had entered when I entered this version of the dungeon, 
but I didn't continue in because there was a locked door. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to quickly see what that last chest is. Oh boy. Giant trap. They function the same, but they're much more dangerous. I'm glad I didn't hit that Tektite. Yeah! Sucks to be you! Here we are. Wow. Worth it. <laughs> yep. So Queen Ambi's left the palace. We're supposed to infer what that means, I guess. I mean, she's gone insane, but we already knew that. Time to go kill a goddess. But yeah, mermaid dungeon, not that bad. Nope. You get to live out your fantasy to be the little mermaid, too, which is great. If only your prince would come. I mean, it's kind of easy to get turned around, and there's a lot of backtracking, but the save warp certainly helps. Oh, yeah. That's another of your uh, items that you forget you have. It's a save warp. <laughs> Pretty much. Mostly because I just save state. Dirty cheater. Well, it's only for, like, turning off the emulator and starting back up at the same place. I've managed not to use the save state in the actual LP, though. So, like, I just use it for practicing. As you should. As evidenced by that very impressive Octorok fight. Right. There's nothing about your playstyle that tells me that you're tool-assisting this in any way. 